Hey everybody. Today we're adding bibliographies to documents generated using R and Quarto. If you're already using some sort of reference management software like Jabref or Bibdesk, this is going to be a super easy transition. If not, now's really the time to, to get on that. It's going to make your life a lot easier in the long run, and it's not even very hard to pick up. I've already started a simple Quarto document called Quarto Bibliographies, and I've opted for an HTML format, although when we're talking about bibliographies, that doesn't really make a huge difference. In order to get a bibliography into this document, we're going to need two things. First of all, a bibliography file, a .bib file, and then second of all, a couple lines of code here to specify, to let Quarto know what that file is, where it should actually find the references that we've collected. We may also want to optionally specify some formatting stuff. I'll get into that in just a few minutes. Okay, so I do my references using Bibdesk. I'm a Mac user. I've been stuck in my ways with this one for quite a while. If you're on a PC, um, I know that, uh, that Jabref is very popular. You can Google that. I've also known a couple of people that have used Mendeley. All of these are free. I know Mendeley is, uh, is commercial software, however. So um, you've definitely got your options. Now, Bibdesk is, uh, is pretty simple to use, and I want to take just a couple of minutes to illustrate how I'm going to do that. I've already gone up to uh, my file menu and created a new bibliography. Here I'm calling it my-bib. Um, and so now I just need some references. And typically I end up getting those from Google Scholar, although certainly that's not the only way to go. So um, here I am on Google Scholar, and uh, I've just pulled up the paper Tidy Data by somebody named Hadley Wickham. And instead of downloading it or reading the paper, I'm going to go to the Cite button here and then ignore all of the MLA and APA type options and just go straight to BibTeX. And what we're going to get here is just unformatted um, information about the thing, about the article. In particular, you see we have the title, the author, the journal etc. The philosophy being, we can worry about exactly the formatting later. Right now, we just want to have everything in a file organized in the appropriate way. And so you noticed I highlighted all this, and I'm just going to copy and paste that. I'm going back to my bib, and I'm just going to literally hit paste. And you'll see that this thing came up now, and I have a site key of Wickham 24 tidy data, it's got the title, etc. If I double click that, I can get some more information. You can see all of the different things that we just put in that we copied and pasted from over there. All right, so let me save this. By the way, I am working in an R Studio project called Quarto Bibs, and within that folder is both the Quarto document that I'm working on and this bibliography document, mybib.bib. So there isn't going to be any issue with um, Quarto figuring out where my files actually go and how they, how they interact with one another. So now for a line of code, bibliography, colon, my-bib.bib. And um, let's actually see the reference. So my reference is going to be, so whenever you're doing a cross-reference of any sort in Quarto, you use at. Um, here, the thing that comes after the at is the site key from this um, bib file that we have. So Wickham 2014 tidy. So let's put that in here. Wickham 2014 tidy. And let's try rendering this. What we're expecting to see is in the actual, now we actually see it, my reference, and then the name of the reference, and then at the bottom it's generated a bibliography for us. So if we have multiple different references here, obviously the reference list will get longer. I want to add one other file to this bibliography just to illustrate some of the different behaviors um, that we might witness here and that might be useful to us. So I've also gone into Google Scholar and pulled up a reference to one of my older papers. It's from 2018. It's called The Wild Goose Chase Problem. It was published in the Journal of the American Mathematical Association. Um, and I could do exactly the same thing, going to site and so on, but instead I'm going to download this. And so I'll click on it and then download it and put it in that same, in that same folder. 
Okay, so the reason I'm doing this is because frequently, not always, but frequently, if you actually have a PDF like I do here, you can just drag it and drop it into your reference management software. And this isn't quite as reliable as copying and pasting the source um, from Google Scholar like I did with the Wickham article here, but in this case, it seems to be coming up okay. You can see it uh, got the author, title, journal, and so on right. The page here, you see that it's got this sort of A with uh, the hat on it, so I may go back and just edit that if I can. There we go, to put a hyphen. So this can be really helpful, but do bear in mind it's not infallible. Okay, so that's been saved. Let's go back to uh, the Quarto document and just hit render and see what happens. And we'll see nothing's actually changed here. I only have the one reference, of course. I didn't ask for another reference. But now my article, the guard article, didn't even show up in my list of references. By default, Quarto, like a, like a lot of different um, uh, software, will only include in the reference list things that are actually referenced in the text. And so if I actually want to see this, I have to add a reference to, let's see, what was the site key in this case? Guard underscore 2018. So at guard underscore 2018. In a minute, I'll show you how to override it. So even if you have something that's not actually cited in the text, it will show up in the, in the list of references. Okay, so there we go. Wickham guard. Okay. Um, it can be nice to, uh, to have those together and separated with a semicolon, especially for some different formatting that you might use. It can look substantially better if we do it this way. Here it looks okay. Notice I put brackets here but in the output it put parentheses. That's a result of things from the styling file. Um, and so again, we're following this philosophy that the formatting should be done separately from the actual um, bibliography itself and even separately from the actual Quarto document itself. In a little bit, we're gonna specify an actual Quarto or an actual style file. Okay, so I said that I would show you how to include references that aren't actually used in the text. So what we're going to do here is add something to our YAML header. It's no site and then a colon and um, what I'm going to want to do is to put an at and then the site key for the thing that I want in there. So in this case it's guard underscore 2018. Now oddly, I don't really know why, but right now I get an error. And this is not just me, this is the expected behavior. In order to actually get this to work you have to put it on a new line with the vertical bar. There's something about this at symbol that the, the YAML doesn't like. So let's, uh, let's do that. And now you can see my article is listed there as well. If you want everything, so like you may have many references that are not actually cited, but you want them all, you can do at star. And so if I render this, things will look exactly the same. There we go. Okay, so the last thing that I want to do is to actually change the styling here. So some journals won't want your references written like this. They won't want Wickham 2014. They'll just want a number, and then they'll want numbers down here in the references. Or maybe they won't want the name of the journal to be italicized, so you'll need to change that. So the way we do that is with a CSL file. And um, if you have a certain journal that you're trying to write for, a certain style you want, you will Google it, and that'll lead you here to a GitHub with just literally thousands of different uh, CSL files for all the different styles that you could want. So I have already downloaded one, almost at random, Elsevier with title. And so I'm going to want to use that. So it's another line in my YAML header, and it's just CSL. That's all you need. And then the name of it. So it's Elsevier or Sevier with title dot CSL. And so now when I render this, the content won't change, but the formatting will. And the path not found. So I must have a typo here. Let me just double check this. with titles. There we go. 
And going back to the rendered document, you can see now my reference is numbered. Here are the numbers down here. And you can see, oh, well, for instance, the title of the journal is not italicized. Okay, so that should be enough to get you going, doing beautiful bibliographies using R and Quarto.